What's going on guys? My name's Caleb Strackengast. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. Just got back from shooting at the Total Archery Challenge out in Big Sky, Montana. Had a blast, shot with some really cool folks out there. And today I wanna to talk about something that I was super impressed with and something that was kind of a new setup for me. And is my arrow setup that I used for TAC this year. I was beyond impressed with how this arrow setup flew in the wind. There were a couple targets in uh, Montana that I shot at where I actually shot the target farther left or right thinking that the wind was going to push my arrow slightly uh, one direction. That did not happen. Every time that I shaded one way or the other for windage, I hit where I was aiming and I was off. These arrows, these four millimeter arrows and why I like them so much and why I was so impressed with them this year was because they buck the wind extremely, extremely well. Now, I did notice uh, the last tack that I shot, I shot the uh, Easton Sonics. They were six millimeter shafts. Just the difference between the sixes and the fours was extraordinary because those six millimeters were pushed in the wind a lot. Now that bow was shooting slower as well, so that does that does play a factor in it, which is also why I like to be in that 280 to 295 range. Uh, but I did not have any issues with these arrows in the wind. 430 grains, shooting 290 feet a second. This arrow should do anything that I need it to do on any big game species that I want to hunt in North America. If you've seen my videos in the past, I'll link it here below uh, of the bow that I'm shooting this year. I'm shooting a 75 pound, 27 inch draw Matthews lift. This is a 340 spine axis ma uh, long range match grade. So with my draw length, my arrow length, my draw weight, if you look at the charts, I'm right on the cusp of needing a 300 over a 340. Now, with that being said, Matthews engineers overall have said if you are on the cusp, they, their bows and they recommend with their bows, they recommend shooting the lighter or less stiff spine. So for me, that would be a 340. So I chose to go with a 340. I tried that as soon as I got my bow. The bow loves this arrow. It perfectly tuned, uh, no issues there. Had I shot the bow and had a weird tear, then I would have went to a 300 and tried it, but I didn't have to. So that's why I went with a 340. So. This arrow is 430 grains. For my setup, it is shooting 290 feet a second. That is well within the range of what I really like to shoot in a hunting bow. Now, 280 is where I like to be at a minimum. The last couple of years, my bow did not shoot that with an arrow that's pretty similar to this weight. Um, I think it was like 438 grains is the arrow that I shot last year. Uh, it did not shoot that arrow at 280, it shot it at like 267. But this bow is shooting in that 290, right at 290, like on the dot with this arrow set up. And that's perfect for me. It seems to tune out well. Uh, and that's kind of where I go with my arrow setups, guys. I don't really, when I set up an arrow, I want to be in that 280 to 295, somewhere in there range if I can help it. Uh, but I also want to stay at, that 400 to 450 range, that really seems to be the sweet spot for me. My arrows are only like 25 and a half inches long, 25 and three quarter inches long. They're really short. Um, and it's hard for me to get a really heavy arrow to tune well. Uh, I know people that people do it, but for me, I just haven't had that much luck with it. I've kind of bounced around over the years between 400 and 500 grains uh, and I usually tend to stay, like stay at that 415 to 450. That's where my arrows kind of end up being. This arrow is really in the sweet spot for me, that 430 grains, it's heavy enough that it's going to punch into whatever I shoot. And I know a lot of, a lot of people give this guy a hard time. Um, but John Dudley said something in one of his videos, and I'm kind of quoting this or paraphrasing this, so don't, don't quote me on it. Don't, don't hate me if this is not exactly what he said, but essentially what he was saying is, why are you building arrows for the 1% shot? Why not take your time and your money and your focus and put it towards 
knowing that 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to make that shot behind the shoulder in the soft area, why are we building arrows for the off chance that you center punch a shoulder bone? When in reality, even with a, with a 700 grain arrow, if you hit an elk or a really heavy deer or something like that, if you hit that animal in that hard shoulder bone or in a really hard bone, and a really thick bone, not in the shoulder plate, you know, that soft bone area right behind the hard shoulder bone that goes down to the elbow. But if you hit that hard shoulder bone, it doesn't really matter what arrow setup you have. More than likely, you are not going to get that arrow into the vitals and you're not going to find that animal, especially on an elk. Uh, and I try to set my arrow up for shooting elk and I try to use that arrow for everything else. Um, the total archery challenge for me is not something that I set an arrow up specifically for because my whole purpose for doing that is to train for my elk hunts. Um, because coming from North Carolina, there's really not a good opportunity for me to really train shooting in those steep angles and those crosswinds and, th and things like that, those longer distances like that. So if I set an arrow up, specifically for tack that I don't plan on hunting with, it's not really doing a whole lot for me as far as allowing me to know my setup. So when I went into tack this year, it was no different than it normally is. I wanted to set an arrow up that I could hopefully hunt with throughout the course of the year, at least the year, possibly set an arrow up for good. Um, that's the ultimate goal. You always want to find something that is like, okay, I'm, set, I'm staying with this. And I think I may have found it with this arrow. Um, Let's go ahead and talk about what this arrow is as far as components. I've already told you it's an Axis Long Range 340, uh, the four millimeter. Uh, from the knock, I'm shooting the, A A the AAE IP4 knocks. And I saw these on Elk Shapes uh, YouTube channel. I saw, I heard him talking about them. These knocks seem to fit the Matthews Lift, or not Matthews Lift, the Matthews, um, What's their new string called? It'll come to me here in a minute, but it seems to fit the Matthews serving size the best out of the knocks that I've tried. The Eastern Axis, not, the, the knocks that come with the Eastern Axis, the long ranges, they don't seem to fit the serving size very well. They're really, really tight. Uh, and I tried the next, I tried the, uh, the bigger knock size from Easton, their G knocks. I tried their bigger gap and it was just too much. So I tried these IP4s. They seem to fit really, really well. They're short, they're beefy, um, they're just built well. I really like them. This is my first year shooting them, but so far I've been really impressed with those. Uh, we'll weigh this stuff out here in a minute, uh, but I can't remember what these weighed. So for the wrap, I'm using uh, Whitewater Archery. These are just some pink and blue and yellow. They're just a really bright color that's easy for me to find if I do happen to shoot like under the grass or in the leaves, make a bad shot and miss the target, which hopefully you don't, but I do sometimes. Um, that's what I've got here. And let me go ahead and tell you what size these are while I'm thinking about it, because I had to do some research to find out what size to get. So these are the five inch by 0.85, so 850 thousandths wide, 0.85 for these four millimeter air shafts and that size seems to be perfect for these. They do have a chart on their website that goes through what size to get, but they, the 0.85 fits these four millimeters really well. So for fletchings, I am using the AAE Max um, Stealth fletchings and I'm using these in pink. Now, when I go to a hunting arrow, I'm not shooting this colorway. I'm gonna be shooting a blue with all blue fletchings, blue knock. But that, the color doesn't matter. The components are gonna be exactly the same. This is just the arrows that I fletched up to practice with. Uh, on the end out here, this is, like I said, this is one of the biggest things that I changed for this year, my outsert system. I am now shooting the Easton Axis. These are their four millimeter, uh, their half out match grade inserts that actually come with the Axis long ranges, the, the match grade arrows now. Those are the components that I'm shooting, and I'll tell you why. So last year on this arrow, I shot the 55 grain um, titaniums. These are, these are the ones that I, I got these from Podium Archery, but I shot the titanium uh, half ounce 
that are made by Easton. And they were nice. The problem that I had, when I would make a bad shot and I would hit a tree, or if I would make a bad shot and I would hit, say, the steel pole that, or steel frame that goes through my 3D deer target, say I hit that leg and that shoulder and I hit that pole, it wouldn't bend the insert or outsert, the half out. It wouldn't bend it because it's titanium. The outsert was perfectly fine. But what I was having issues with is it was just busting my arrow shaft because of all that momentum and all that kinetic energy hitting all at one time and that insert's not giving at all. It would hit and it would just bust out the side of my arrow shaft. Now, you might say that's because the arrow shafts are weak. I don't necessarily believe that because I've done the same thing on Eastern Axis uh, when using the hit inserts with no collar. Uh, and an Easton Axis, in my opinion, the full-size five millimeter Easton Axis, it's hard to beat them for durability. But I chose to try the aluminums this year, and I'm really glad that I did. Let me talk about one of the things that I've figured out. Like I said earlier, if you're building your arrow to shoot an elk in the shoulder, you're probably not shooting right because you shouldn't be shooting the elk in the shoulder. Now, I know things happen. Well, like I said, I don't think you're gonna punch through that shoulder either way. Now, aluminum. The reason why so many people hate on aluminum is because it bends. And that, that is true, they do bend. And I will say these match grade um, outserts, they bend. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you they don't. But what I like about that is the fact that if you shoot something hard, and you, you shoot it hard enough that it's gonna either bend your insert or it's gonna bust out the side of your arrow shaft, I would rather bend my insert. The reason why is because it's very easy just to heat this up with a heat gun, pull it out, put another one in and continue using this arrow shaft because aluminum or carbon arrows don't bend. They go back in shape. So it's not like you're gonna hit something hard and ruin your arrow shaft unless you break your arrow shaft. So the aluminum uh, uh, pro grade components I have been very impressed with, but like I said, they do bend. I've shot some, I've hit some trees at weird angles, uh, making some bad shots when I was trying to dial my bow in. Uh, and I will say that because of them bending, it has saved my arrow shafts. I have not broken an arrow shaft yet in a, in a scenario where I would have if I was still shooting the, the titanium half outs. Now, Easton does make the titanium stainless uh, version of these. There are 100 grains, I believe, and I think they also might make a all, maybe an all titanium. I know they make three options. The aluminums are what come with the arrow, and in order to save on money and save on having to go back to a 100 grain broadhead, I like shooting a 125. In order to save from having to do that and go over the arrow weight that I wanted, I chose to shoot these aluminums and I have been very impressed with them. Like I said, they bend, but they've saved my arrow shafts. And when I'm shooting through an animal, I do not care a hill of beans. If I bend my arrow, if I bend my outsert, I do not care. If I pull that broad, that arrow out of the ground or out of that animal and the shaft isn't broken, other than the shaft being broken, I can pull that insert out, put another one in. It's a lot cheaper to do that with the aluminums than it is the titaniums. Those titaniums cost me like $50 for six. So an additional $100 on top of your total air cost. Now, these things are very strong in the fact that they are not gonna snap off. I don't personally feel like they're gonna snap off because the way this outsert slides over the end of that air shaft, it just kind of locks everything together. They're very accurate, very high tolerance. You're not gonna get any wobble before you shoot, like if you're setting up hunting arrows that you're planning on putting broadheads on, you're not gonna have to worry about them wobbling on you there uh, when you're building your arrows. Um, but like I said, I don't personally worry about the aluminums. How many years do people shoot aluminums through thousands and thousands of animals and nobody, nobody really complained about it. It wasn't until the components started getting better that you started really hearing that the aluminum components were not as good or not up to par. I do think that Easton has hit a home run with these components this year, and that's why I'm gonna to continue to shoot them. 
other than shooting and hitting trees or a rock or like I said, the steel pole on my target, I haven't had any issues with these and I'm gonna to continue to shoot them and I plan to shoot elk with them this year as well. Uh, now on the end, like I said, I am shooting a 125. These are just some longer, skinnier um, field tips that I got off of Amazon, super cheap, but they've got the little rubber O-rings Got a gnat or something flying around me. They've just got two double little O-rings uh, on the uh, field tip that keeps them from vibrating. I like these because they're a little bit longer and they more, they more accurately fit the length of like the broadheads that I choose to shoot. So I feel like if you have a 125 grain head and all 100, 125 grains is right here at your outsert, that could change the trajectory of that arrow over a long distance. I saw that with the severs last year when I was shooting the sever 125s. Because they were so much longer than the field tips I was shooting, I did notice them dropping out at distance. Um, now, with that being said, these are a little bit longer. They, they more match the broadhead length of what I like to shoot, so that's why I'm shooting this. And the reason why I like 125s, instead of going to a heavier outsert and shooting a 100 grain field tip, I like shooting the 55 grain outsert and a 125 grain field tip because that weight is farther to the end of my arrow shaft, giving me just slightly more uh, FOC. I have no clue what the FOC is on these arrows and frankly, I really don't care because I know it's over that like 12% uh, just based on measuring arrows before and setting up my forward to center or front of center, uh, right about there on that arrow shaft is where that thing balances. And these things shoot a broadhead very well. They shoot extremely well in the wind. So I really don't care what my forward to center or front of center percentage is. I think people put way too much emphasis into knowing everything about their arrow. As far as it being durable, that's what I care about. As far as it breaking the wind, that's what I care about. And as far as it being accurate and carrying my broadheads well at distance, that's what I care about. So that is my arrow setup. Let me go into building an arrow from start to finish and kind of how I uh, assemble these things um, for a target or hunting arrow because they're gonna be the same for me. So I've got my arrow shaft here. Uh, I took my knock out. I like to cut my arrows with my knock out. That's something that I started doing this year and it seems like it gives me a more square cut on the end. I've already got this arrow marked uh, based on my arrow saw at home because that's where I cut all my arrows for the most part, but I am up here at the shop doing this build. Um, so I took and marked my arrow shaft at home. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it on their arrow saw here and then I'll be back over here in just a second and we'll go into the assembly of this thing. All right, so I've got this arrow cut like I said, these arrow, my arrows are roughly 25 and a half inches, plus or minus a little bit, depending on how I cut these things. But with this uh, component set up right here, my arrows are in that 25 and a half inch range. All right, so one thing that you won't see in this video is I have a tool at home where I can find the spine of this arrow shaft. And uh, I went ahead and found that. And I didn't do that with my arrows for tack. I'm gonna go ahead and do that later or now that I'm home. I didn't really have time to do it before. But now that I'm home, I'm gonna go ahead and find the spine of these arrows. And I'm gonna do some testing to find if turning these arrows, pretty much spine indexing. Uh, I'm gonna try to find out if spine indexing's on this bow setup, on these arrows, if it makes a difference. Uh, Last year I did it with the arrows, the setup that I shot last year, I didn't notice a difference, but I'm gonna do it again this year and just test it. Uh, but I did find that on this arrow shaft and then I'll, I'll show you why here in a minute. I wanna go ahead and line my uh, wrap up with that mark. And the reason behind that is I want my wrap seam 
to be where that mark is and I want my one of my fletchings, I don't really have a cock vein because I shoot the same colors uh, on my arrow. So I want one of my fletchings to line up with the seam of that wrap. And to me that just sell, that seals that wrap down because I have had before where the edges of my wrap kind of want to peel up. Um, so I go ahead and try to line at least one of my fletchings up with that wrap. And that is what I'm going to go ahead and do here. Um, one thing that I do like about the whitewater wraps is when you order wraps through them, they send you a piece of cardboard. It's not a really a big deal. You can take a magazine or anything like that, but essentially you just want something clean and something that's kind of spongy that allows you to kind of put some pressure down on the arrow shaft. Take your alcohol where you just cut your arrow shaft and if it'll fit, yeah, it'll fit. Run that Q-tip down in that shaft and you can probably see how dark and black that is. And then I'll take the clean side and I'll run the clean side down in there. Still got stuff in it, so I'm gonna run another one in there. Man, these four millimeters, it's hard to get it down in there, but they'll go. All right, it's clean now. Now I don't have to worry about my hot glue uh, setting up correctly. Sorry, my microphone was getting weird. Then I'm gonna put some alcohol on a paper towel. You can use acetone, you can use alcohol. I use acetone at home. And then just take and clean your back end of your air shaft where your, um, wrap is going to go just to make sure there's no, no particles or anything that are going to get stuck under your wrap. Now, like I said, this time I'm going to try to line this up with the index mark on my air shaft and just see if that makes a difference when I start shooting these, trying to broadhead tune later in the season. All right, where's my mark? Right there. Right in there. And really all I do is I just take and start rolling and just maintain even pressure. That's, it's much easier to put these wraps on when you don't have your fletching, I mean, I'm sorry, your knock in your era. So now that I have my wrap on, the edges look good. That edge is almost exactly on my index mark. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get a knock out. Let's go ahead and weigh this. Now, one thing I will say, something that I found out this year is even though I order my wraps through whitewater archery, and even though I'm shooting the same diameter, the same length, last year's wraps I ordered with their armor coating on it. This year's wraps I did not. I prefer the non-armor coated wraps, just personal preference. Between uh, my arrow setup, same length, same everything, last year with just a different wrap, that's all that was different. I ended up, I put an IP4 knock in. There was like six or seven grains different in the arrow. So I ended up weighing the wraps out because I couldn't figure out where my difference was. And it was the wraps. That armor coating on those wraps make the wraps a lot heavier. So I'm shooting the non-armor coated wraps. I just thought that might be a note that you might like to know. All right, so with my grain scale, we'll try it again. With my grain scale, these IP4 knocks are weighing in at seven grains. So what I like to do is, this is some hot melt from Iron Wheel. I don't know the brand, I don't know what brand they use, but because they really specialize in hick and components and stuff, and uh, the people that I've heard using this hot melt have had really good luck with their um, outserts really staying in there really strong. This is what I went with. I've been shooting this for a couple years now. One little chunk of this is like 
10 or 12 bucks, but it lasts for years and years and years. I built a bunch of arrows out of this one little chunk of this stuff. Instead of using a lighter like I did in the past, I like to take, I bought me a heat gun. I think a heat gun works much better. Uh, so I'm gonna take this over here real quick and go ahead and heat this thing up and put my, uh, put some hot melt on there and then I'll come back over here and uh, insert it into the arrow. All right, really the main reason why I started going to that heat gun is because it just, to me, it's easier to kind of control your heat than it is with a lighter. Uh, and now that I've got some hot melt on my center pin there, I got a, what I do is I put enough hot melt on there where when I slide my arrow up on that sh uh, the shaft of that outsert and smush it up into the, um, the outer sleeve that goes over your, over the air shaft, it pushes some of that excess glue up into there and it sandwiches it around the outer portion of that sleeve and the outside of my air shaft. So now I'm just gonna kind of warm that back up with this lighter real quick. I don't mind hitting it with a flame when it's actually on the outsert, but when it's on my block, it's a lot easier just to run it over a heat gun and keep from overheating all your hot melt back on that. Not quite hot enough. You gotta get this stuff pretty hot. You almost need it to be running around your outsert. There we go, it's starting to run around it now. And you can see, yeah, I actually can hear it, and I should have probably done that before I put my knock in. I wasn't even thinking. Be careful, don't do what I just did, and when you put your knock in and try to put that outsert in, you can actually hear the air come out. You can hear the air bubbles kind of come out in that hot melt. If you leave your knock in there, what it can do is the air inside your air shaft now has nowhere to go and it can actually push your outsert just slightly back out. So now that that stuff's still kind of pliable, I'll just go ahead and run my fingers around it and take it off. And there's still a little bit of a film there, but you can really just kind of take your finger and roll it around, it comes right off. And that's it guys. That outsert is not going anywhere. Of course, you want to wait a little while before you shoot it into a target. Let it for sure cool off and harden up. But the inside of that air shaft is clean, so as soon as that stuff sets up and cools off, that, not, that outsert isn't going anywhere. And that's about as good of a job as you can get on that. Uh, once it's cooled off, you can put your knock back in. You don't have to worry about pushing that back out. It's just while it's really um, really loose in there and really hot, you don't want the air to uh, push your outsert back out. All right, let's move this stuff out. Now, a lot of guys are using the Bits, Bits and Burger jig. I actually like the Arizona Easy Fletch. Uh, this is the Minimax right helical. I really like this jig. It's fast, it's easy, it's portable. Like if I wanna take it with me somewhere or take it to somebody's house or whatever it is, like it's just easy to carry around, it's lightweight. One thing I will say with these fletchings, uh, these Max Stealth fletchings, you do have to run a primer pin on them. I've tried several different ways to clean these things. Um, I've used acetone, acetone works pretty good too. Um, but just like, if you don't do anything to them, they will not stick. I'm about to need another primer pen. I've had this primer pen for like three or four years now. So these things last a long, long time. And just take and run that primer pen on your fletchings. That's the only downside to the max stealths is having to run a primer pen, but it really doesn't take that much longer. And like I said, a $10 primer pin lasts several years depending on how many arrows that you're gonna fletch. But if you're just fletching arrows for yourself, a primer pin lasts a long time. So I've got my three fletchings primed. 
A lot of times what I'll do, like if I have some time in the afternoon, I'll take a, my bag of fletchings and I'll just go through and I'll clean them and then I'll just put them in a place where I know those have been cleaned. Uh, with this jig, there's a way that you can take, so there's a little ridge on one side of this uh, IP4 knock. I always make that ridge uh, towards my face on my string. That's how I orient these, these knocks. Like I said, I want this knock, I want this one of my fletchings to line up with the index mark on my air shaft which also lines up with the seam on my wrap. So I've got that spun in that where I want it. I've got it oriented correctly. Go ahead and slide these. It doesn't take long for that primer stuff to, to dry on these fletchings. You can just stick them back, stick them right in there. Glue wise, this is the Easton Quick Bond. This is what they use here at the shop. I have some, I don't even remember the name of it now, but it's silver and pink. I'll link it into this video. I really like that glue. I get it off of Amazon. It's some kind of quick bond glue, but I can't remember the name of it. I just go ahead and put some dabs on each one of these fletchings. You don't have to be super fast, but you don't want to take forever either because this glue will start to set up. It, it dries pretty quick. Um, I try to get most of the excess off so it just doesn't make a mess and stick to my fletching jig. And after every couple arrows, you'll have to kind of clean this jig off because sometimes you'll get some excess glue in there and it'll start making your fletching stick to your jig. All right, those are glued. Now you just want to ease your jig up, slide your cap down, get it in place, and that's pretty much it. Now, you don't have to use this, but it does make the fletching process a little bit faster. This is called, made by something called Magic Kim's Solutions. It's just an accelerator or an activator for super glue. And it's cheap, uh, a big can. I get it off Amazon, just kind of squirt those. And you don't have to use this. I know I've heard pe some people saying that it uh, makes the, the super glue too rigid um, and it can cause it to crack. but. I haven't had that issue. Once I've sprayed these, I've never had an issue with these fletchings coming off this arrow. And one thing that you'll notice is this arrow, this one fletching was slightly lower than the other two. And I have noticed that with the Arizona Easy Fletch jig is it's not quite as accurate as like a bits. Um, but I haven't noticed that it makes a difference in my ability to shoot as accurate uh, one versus the other. Uh, shooting over 100 yards, I haven't noticed that that flushing being slightly off makes a difference. Now, I will say this, whether or not it makes a difference or not, on my hunting arrows, I try to be extremely particular on making sure these fletchings are lined up. But just in a practice arrow, I'm not gonna sweat that one bit. But if I fletch one up to hunt with and it's off like that, instead of ripping it off and wasting the arrow or wasting all that, my, that my wrap and all my fletchings, I'll just go ahead and shoot it uh, as a practice arrow, but I won't use it to hunt with. Um, with that being said, that is pretty much my arrow uh barring the broadhead which i'll get into later in the season on what broadheads that i'm going to shoot because right now i have a couple in mind that i need to test uh before i make my final conclusion to what i'm going to shoot but that's it guys that is my arrow setup that i shot at TAC. that's my arrow setup that i'm going to elk hunt with deer hunt with turkey hunt with everything for this season i will do with this arrow Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hopefully you got something out of it. We always appreciate you watching. Like we always say, comment, like, and subscribe. That really helps our channel. Please hit these guys up at Grafton Archery at 704-855-1300 if you have any archery-related questions. Comment down below and let me know what videos you guys want to see over this summer and into the hunting season. Good luck out there, guys. Remember to live your life to the fullest. Use your passions to bless others. We'll catch you on the next one.